Hi guys, I'm Amelia and welcome to Court Food. This place is insane. That sounds like my perfect dinner. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you around the island of Corfu. We're going to look at beaches, places to go, how to get around, good restaurants, good vegan food, always. And lots of little tips and tricks to have an amazing time whilst you're here in Corfu. Corfu is a Greek island in the Ionian Sea and it is of each shredded northwest of Greece, mainland Greece, and you can see mainland Greece and Albania from Corfu, which is really cool and like. It's just kind of magical seeing these mountains off in the distance. Corfu is really cheap and easy to get to from so many airports. I flew from Bristol, which was super easy. I think my flights cost £300-ish, two people, round trip. So not bad at all. It's got its own airport, which is actually pretty cool because it feels like you're landing on the sea because the airport is right by the sea, which is just incredible. The capital of Corfu is actually called Corfu. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, Corfu Town or Corfu City. Corfu is known for its rugged mountainscape, amazing crystal clear blue waters, good food, super friendly locals, and incredible swimming and drinking, really. Due to its history, Corfu has a lot of influences from Italy, Greece, France, and all other places, and it's an amalgamation of these wonderful cultures, which you can totally tell and see in everything the island has to offer. During my time in Corfu, I stayed in Palakastritza, which I would highly recommend. It's an incredible town. It has an amazing feeling to it. It's got brilliant things to do. My favorite restaurant by far in Palakastritza is Gran Aladdin. They have a whole vegan menu, which is kind of the only place actually that we found that does vegan food, which is why I've eaten here four times. The food is incredible and the wine is good too. The waiting staff treat you like family. It was just a magical restaurant and I would highly recommend it. They serve traditional Greek dishes that are made vegan, including dolma, which is cabbage leaves stuffed with rice, moussaka, which is an aubergine and potato, basically a lasagna, but better. Um, they have vegan desserts and brilliant local wine. Don't try the wine. <laughs> Don't try the wine. <laughs> You'll regret it. Lots of incredible bars in Palakastritza and my favourite two by far is Tango Bar and Cactus Bar. Tango All Day Bar is a really good place to come for a coffee and they do a really nice continental breakfast that unfortunately is not vegan but is very popular. Really good place to try a Fredo espresso, which is an iced espresso, which is very easy to drink here in Greece. And a really nice place to enjoy the food. My other favourite place to go for a drink was the Wicked Cactus Bar, which is probably the best bar I've been to in years. The owner is this amazing guy who makes all the cocktails, plays really good music, and again, has amazing views that you just can't miss out on. Another cool highlight of Palakastritza is La Grotta Beach Bar. This is a really cool little bar tucked away down in a cove that you can go swimming in all day long. There's a diving board going straight into the sea with cliff jumping as well, and there's amazing food and drink, including vegan options that are available from the bar. Park Strips is home to lots of gorgeous little beaches tucked away in sandy coves with crystal clear waters and fish and boats swimming through. But the best beach is by far the main beach of Palak Stritzer. St Spiridon Beach, it's called, but it's just known as Palak Stritzer Beach. And it is, oh, I can't even describe it. It's tucked away in this little lagoon with mountains and monasteries on either side. Best place to go on the beach, as far left as you can, hire a sunbed, it's six euros for the day, and you just feel like you have your own private island. It's an incredible feeling. And there's a bar right behind you that will bring you up for a spritzel day. So one of the reasons Palak Strips is different from kind of everywhere else I've visited really is that it doesn't have the main centre of the town. It's a long road dotted with hotels, restaurants, bars, beaches, 
harbours, coves, it's a really unique layout. Because of that, I would recommend trying to stay as centrally as possible so that you can access all these great places without having to walk too far every day. It's a really scenic part of Greece and having kind of travelled around this island a little bit, I definitely decided that Palakastritsa was my favourite place. However, there are some really cool day trips you can do from Palakastritsa, including Corfu Town, San George and Sidari. Heading into Corfu Town for the day is super easy and affordable. The green buses run through Corfu and they're completely reliable. If you hop on, it costs two euros fifty to get to Corfu Town for the day, and two euros fifty back again. So that's ten euros for two people for a whole day trip to Corfu. Town. So Corfu Town is a really beautiful town. It has a lot of Venetian architecture and beautiful cobbled streets, pastel-coloured buildings, a really intricate maze that you can absolutely get lost in for hours, which we definitely did. It's bustling, it's lively. It has incredible food options and a gorgeous market that you can explore and do all your shopping in. For vegan food, you have a few more options in Corfu Town. When the bus drops you off, it's a short walk into the old town of Corfu and on your way, you need to go to Rosie's Bakery. Rosie's Bakery is a traditional Corfu bakery made nearly entirely vegan or gluten free. Rosie is a really wonderful chatty woman that will help you pick out your favourite flavours. You come away with this little box filled with traditional Greek baked goods. It's kind of an experience in itself going to Rosie's Bakery and I definitely spent way more money than I should have on Baklava but it was totally worth it. For lunch we went to Bizu Cafe which is a tucked away quiet cool little side street with a 100% vegan menu which is so nice to get out of the midday heat and away from the hustle and bustle of the main town. We settled down and I had probably one of the best sandwiches I have ever had, which was a ginormous baguette, absolutely stuffed with hummus and tomato with an incredible salad. To cool off in the afternoon, you have to go to Papa Giorgio's and get yourself an ice cream. They have a range of vegan flavors. I got the chocolate and the wild strawberry, which was some of the best ice cream I have ever had. It was just mind-blowingly good. To finish off your day, you need to have an Aperol spritz or a pint of Alpha beer, literally anywhere, because it is the drink, the go-to drink of Corfu. Another way of getting around the island is to rent a bike. Now you will see tourists everywhere renting bikes, scooters, quad bikes. We rented a quad bike for two days from Spiros Bikes in Palakastritsa. It cost us 70 euros to hire a quad bike for two days. From Palakastritsa you can easily bike anywhere. 45 minutes takes you to the gorgeous beach of San George. We've got mountains hugging a long white beach with crystal clear waters and it just feels like you're in Rio. It's incredible. For probably my favourite lunch that we had while we were on holiday, we went to the San George Cafe. They don't have heaps of vegan options, but their salads and burgers were incredible. Go up a layer and sit on the first floor and have a smoothie overlooking the sea because it is absolutely stunning. Another good day trip from Palakastritsa is to the popular town in the north of Corfu called Sidari. Now this town is well known as being a bit of a party town and for me it was a little bit too touristy. It's cool for a day trip or a night out and you can do some wicked activities like parasailing and so is the banana boat things. What are those they called? When you like hold on and a speedboat takes you, you like fall off, whatever that is. Now the best thing that you need to do whilst you're in Sidari is swim the Canal de Amor. This is a famous cove in the north of Sidari and the legend is that if you swim the length of this cove, with your loved one that you'll be together forever or if you're single and you swim out to the furthest tip of the cave you will find your soulmate. We also explored some of the caves around this area that were absolutely beautiful and this place is known for film crews. On your way back from any of these day trips my number one suggestion for staying in this area is to go to the Golden Fox. Now this is an incredible bar pool restaurant nestled up in the mountains with beautiful views over the whole of Palakastritsa region. You can grab a coffee, you can grab a drink, and you can use the pool for free, including the sunbeds for free, and just soak up some sunshine. Right, my top cool food pit. If I had to stay anywhere, it would easily be Palakastritsa. My favourite beach, hands down the Palakastritsa beach. It just feels like you have your own private lagoon. It's incredible. If you want to try any authentic food from Corfu, Corfu, Corfunian, Corfudian, Corfu food. And a dolma, moussaka, and of course, while you're in Greece, you have to have a gyros. The best drinks are the local white wine, which are really cheap. It's about seven euros for half a litre of this incredible wine. The best cocktail to have is, of course, an Aperol spritz. Another top recommendation is going to the effort of hiring a bike and exploring the local area. You never know what you might find. Google Maps, of course, is a brilliant for this kind of thing. You can explore all day long on the bikes, and the views are stunning. Mm. 
don't get a hangover on your last day like we did. <laughs> That's my top f tip. Hangover. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Please find my Instagram link below if you want to check out some more of my adventures, and I'll catch you in the next one.